What's up guys? Um, I brought my 53 Tweed Pro down to the shop here at Zim's Guitars. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do like a general servicing on it, clean it up, make sure it's running healthy, and um, I'll show some of the Ohm's Law stuff they use to calculate the bias and uh, some good tips for cleaning these things up just to make sure they're running pretty nice. So we're going to open this thing up on the bench right now and we'll get right into it. Okay, so uh, we got the back panel off of this Tweed Pro, and uh, the first thing that you recognize when you open these things up is that it's had all the electrolytics replaced. Uh, these four filter caps are replaced with uh, nice F and T caps, and uh, this uh, this is the uh, the bias capacitor that we'll take a closer look at later, um, and this bias resistor right here has been changed, and then the electrolytic cap that's right here has been changed other than that everything is looking uh, pretty much stock um, these uh, these resistors in the filter section have been changed uh, from carbon resistors to metal film uh, but other than that all these uh, carbon resistors are original the uh, the paper oil caps uh, all these astrons are all original and uh, these blue molded Ajax caps um, our original too, uh, which oftentimes you see these blue caps come in later. They're really known for being in the blackface amps, um, but uh, you can see that all these paper Astron caps are uh, what the Tweeds are known for, as well as the yellow uh, Astron caps. But this one got the brown paper ones. So um, another thing is that the preamp tubes on this uh, are all 6SC7s which are octal preamp tubes just like your power tubes um, we'll take a closer look at it in a little bit but if you take them out they actually have eight pins and uh, it's guided by that big plastic pin in the middle uh, the, I'll take I'll show you a closer look on those later and uh, the cool thing they're actually metal uh, metal casings on those instead of glass and um, it just takes some 6L6 power tubes and um, a 5U4 rectifier so uh, it has had a three prong power cord put onto it and it's got a big old 15 inch speaker in there uh, so we're going to pop this chassis out probably and lay it down and um, We'll get to cleaning because you can see it's a little dirty in there. We're going to spray out all the tubes. Uh, we're just going to go through my general maintenance uh, routine. And I'll show you guys all that. And we'll calculate the bias on it. Make sure that the power tubes are running at a healthy setting. Um, and uh, then we'll be good to go. Okay, so we've got this Pro up on the bench. Got the chassis out. Um... The first thing that we're going to do, since we're going to be in here cleaning, uh, messing around inside the chassis, uh, what we want to do is we want to drain the filter caps. Uh, I played this amp probably about 15 minutes ago now, and uh, I just want to show you that these filter capacitors here, they're all going to continue to hold a charge even after the amp is, um, they're going to all hold a voltage on each of the nodes after the amp has been off and unplugged. Just to show you guys. Uh, you can see right here that amp is unplugged and uh, I've got my multimeter and uh, we're testing for uh, voltage so I'm going to put one lead on the chassis and I'm going to measure the positive end of each of these capacitors so that one's 14.8 volts and they should all be pretty similar 14.7 14.75 14.72 so uh, that's just showing you right here that all those capacitors are still holding a charge there so what we're gonna do to drain these is we're gonna get ourselves a resistor <clears throat> and uh, right now I'm using a 52k because it's all that I brought with me and uh, you're gonna get yourself one of these right here so all this is is it's a wire 
and you got two alligator clips on the end uh, soldered to the end of each lead and uh, so this is just a solid connection right here and what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna clip one end to the chassis and the other end is gonna be clipped to this resistor right here you can use any resistor value that you'd like um, the higher the resistance the low the, the slower it's gonna drain the voltage off of these capacitors here um, so uh, like I said before this is a 52k and um, if you don't use a resistor and you touch the lead directly to that uh, lead of the capacitor it's gonna give you a big spark uh, it's not gonna do anything but it might scare you so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip this end to uh, anywhere on the chassis which is grounded and then I'm gonna touch each lead of the resistor or each lead of the capacitor to the end of the resistor here and it's gonna drain the voltage from the capacitors through the resistor through this wire here out the other end onto the chassis and then everything inside of there will be safe for us to touch so I'll clip that ed end on there and uh, I'm not sure if you could see that from here all right so uh, I'll clip it down right here for us so you could see that that end is clipped clipped onto the chassis and uh, I'm just gonna hold this on hold the resistor onto that uh, solder connection where each capacitor is hold it there for a couple seconds so I'm just going down the line Okay, and one thing that I did want to, to note is that whenever you're doing this, um, on your clips, you're going to want to have one of these rubber um, shields or covers that are going to go over the clips so you're not just directly holding onto the metal here um, or else you're going to be conducting uh, the current that's going to be coming through uh, from each of these capacitors and that's not going to be very pretty. okay so now that I got all those we're gonna go ahead and measure each node again and see what our voltage is so on the first one we got 0.8 volts so less than 1 volt 0 0.9 0 0.9 and 0.9 so uh, we're under a volt there so it's gonna be safe for us to touch but one thing that I always do like to do just to make sure um, is I'll take the resistor off. So now we don't have the resistor clipped on. And I'm just going to do the same process. But since there's not a, a high voltage on any of these leads for the capacitor, it's not going to spark or anything. So what I'll do is I'll just clip it right on there. Let that sit for a second. Clip it right onto the next one clip it onto the next and onto the last one so if you're doing this to a black face amp or a silver face amp or some amp that's not a fender you have to pay attention to which polarity these capacitors are you're always going to want to clip it onto the positive lead um, in a lot of the black face amps it'll have three or four maybe five capacitors all in series or in parallel they'll all be facing the same up direction and then the last one will be flipped it'll be in series with the capacitor before it um, so the negative side will be down here and the positive side would be up here um, so that's something that you want to pay attention to in this case they're all uh, the same polarity so we're gonna measure that 0.2 volts 0.2 volts 0.2 volts and 0.2 volts so uh, we're good to touch this now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my multimeter 
and uh, we'll be using that later whenever we start to bias but uh, for now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through we're gonna spray out all the pots um, we're gonna clean up some of these input jacks here um, I only really use the first input uh, which is the um, the instrument channel input um, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean them all up anyways just to make sure that they are being as quiet as they could be um, because if we look on each of these inputs um, they all have what's called a shunt it's a shunting jack so <clears throat> if you look at each one here is the part that will touch your um, the tip of your cable it's this curled over part at the top so that's what's going to um, carry the, the signal and since we have four of these we don't want them to be open when we're only using one of them so they have what's called a shunting um, jack right here which is um, basically a piece that's going to connect this top this uh, this part that will touch the tip of your cable it's going to ground it when it's not plugged in so um, if I grab a cable really fast then we'll be able to see <clears throat> that whenever you plug it in it's gonna lift it away from the shunt so whenever we plug that in there it might be kinda hard to see on here but this little piece actually got pushed away from this from the part that touches the tip um, so whenever it's not plugged in they're touching so it's grounded so your signal uh, no signal is gonna be coming through here uh, it's not gonna be making any noise no hum uh, if everything's grounded nicely so one thing that I like to do just to make sure that that connection is real nice uh, you're gonna get yourself some sandpaper uh, it's not it's not very heavy grit um, it's kinda light so we're not trying to remove any metal from this we're just trying to clean the dirt off so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the cable in and then you slide it right in between those and if you take your cable out it'll pinch it and then you just have some room to go ahead and sand that down a little bit and what it's going to do is it's just going to clean that connection off really nice make sure that it's grounding really well um, it's just going to keep it running really nice and quiet and you're not going to get any weird noises whenever you're not running through that channel um, so we're going to go ahead and do that to all three of those So put that in there pull our jack out so it closes up you should feel some resistance on the sandpaper just because it's um, the two uh, leads of this jack are actually pinching themselves together um, sometimes I might clean the outside a little bit if it looks a little corroded or anything So uh, these jacks are pretty old, so it uh, looks like this one was replaced. Um, but uh, <clears throat> And if you notice that these two, the, the shunt isn't touching the, the hot lead of the, the input jack, what you're going to want to do is you're going to pinch them together at the base so that they're touching. Uh, you don't have to pinch them so that they're flat against each other, but you just want to make sure that they do have a good connection there. Um, okay and then let's do that to the last one here so this is the one that I usually play through it's the loosest one out of all of them um, but uh, it's still making a nice connection there so we're just gonna clean that up and if we look um, so that's gonna help with all of our connections um, for each of those so Next, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look through the amp and make sure that I'm not seeing any um, bulging capacitors or resistors that looks like they're burnt up and crispy or anything. Uh, this one actually looks to be in pretty decent shape. Um, it's been serviced before. Uh, like I said, it's had all these capacitors replaced. This, this big white thing is actually um, a wire wound resistor. 
and uh, this can take up to 10 watts of power dissipation um, so they use this in the bias section to be very accurate and also to have a very high operating point to where it's it's not going to burn that resistor up if you use some of these carbon comp resistors um, a lot of these are only half watt or one watt uh, and you definitely want to be running something that's uh, quite a bit more power can take a bit more power um, like that in the bias section here this amp is cathode biased and um, so the cathodes of each of the six v of the six l six power tubes are running directly through this capacitor and this resistor to ground. So um, it doesn't look like we have any burnt up resistors. All the capacitors are looking pretty nice. Um, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, you gotta you gotta recap your whole amp. You know, um, replace all the capacitors in it." Well, that only really goes for the electrolytics that are in here because those are um, typically a lot higher capacitance and they generally have a lot higher voltage um, on each of those um, and they kind of will burn up and they start to leak and they start to bulge and whatever so uh, as long as you've seen all of the filter caps replaced uh, normally your coupling caps and whatnot down here in the tone in the tone section the preamp section uh, those are all usually kind of good to go especially these uh, these blue um, molded caps they tend to last a really long time and uh, if you open up a vintage fender amp those are what you want to see if you're opening up a blackface amp if you um if you have a tweed like this one you're going to want to see some of these astron caps maybe a couple of those blue molded caps um so you know these are kind of what make the tone of the amp along with the transformers and stuff too um, so it's nice to see all those in here and uh, looks like they're all pretty much untouched from the factory so now that we have these um, jacks cleaned we're gonna go ahead and clean the pots uh, on this amp there's only three we have two uh, two volumes and a tone so what you're gonna want to do is get yourself some electronics cleaner um, I like to use deoxit but when you don't got deoxit just got to use that CRC um, the deoxid is really nice because it'll actually leave a lubricant inside of the pots where this one's just going to kind of clean it out um, so we'll just go ahead and spray it in there give it a couple sprays and um, go ahead and work that work that knob around a little bit to get this all around inside the pot it's going to clean it up really nice going to make it a little quiet it's not going to pop and crackle whenever you're uh whenever you adjust it when your amp is on so we'll do that to each of those and you know this is all just kind of general maintenance stuff that i like to do when i have a tube amp um yeah it's a lot of work but you know if you could do it yourself it's not too bad you just spend an afternoon doing it and uh, you don't have to pay anyone to do it and you get the benefits of having a nice clean tube tone that you can't get from a solid state amp so I know a lot of you guys out there like to like to play solid state amps because they're a lot less maintenance and you don't really got to worry about a lot of stuff like this so now that we have those sprayed out um, our next step is we are going to want to clean out the tube sockets so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this uh, this first six SC7, and it looks like it's a GM Delco. And these are um, these are octal preamp tubes. So if you see, it has eight pins, and then this plastic pin in the middle is just like on your power tubes, where it has a little notch, and it'll only fit in that certain. Uh, in that certain orientation um, and these are also metal casings on there instead of plastic or not plastic glass sorry so uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna spray out each of these um, we're gonna spray out each of the little um, pins Okay, so just spray that out, and then uh, 
I like to wiggle the tube in. Wiggle it back out a little bit. Just to make sure that those connections are staying nice and clean. And uh, we'll go down the line and do that for each of them. And these tubes are really tight fitting, which means that our um, our pins inside of there, um, they're fitting nice and tight in there. So you can see that this one is an RCA um, 6SC7, which is really cool because these are kind of hard to come by, um, especially the uh, with a metal cover on them and um, you know an octal tube so it's nice to see that that's still in here we're gonna go ahead and spray this out and you know a lot of the times people are tubes are the most common failure point in any of your amps but that being said if you treat them right if you take good care of them if you do some general maintenance on your amp and make sure that it's running nicely um, your tubes are gonna last you a really long time you know so Put that in a couple times. There you go. And now we'll check, do this last one. So this one is a General Electric um, made in USA 6SC7 as well. Or not as well. The last one was an RCA, but nice GE tube. And uh, we're going to go ahead and spray this one out now. you know one thing is if you see on these pins there's ever some corrosion um, if it looks dirty what you can always do is you could just get yourself some of the same sandpaper they use to um, clean out your jacks and just kind of rub those make sure that they're getting a really nice connection um, if you're not getting a nice connection on each of these tubes um, it can cause all kinds of noises crackling humming um, howling noises, screeching noises, you know, you name it. It just kind of depends. And, um, you know, that's one of the first things that I always like to check when I get an amp in that's making weird noises is I like to just do a nice general maintenance on it, clean everything out, spray everything out, make sure that the tubes are um, having a nice strong connection. And a lot of the times, you know, that'll solve the problem. So uh, next, we're going to pull out these power tubes here. And um, these are some really nice power tubes. These are wing C's. Uh, it might be kind of hard to see with the light there. But um, these are some nice 6L6's. Um, 6L6C's these are. And um, you know I really... These wing C's, um, they actually stopped being produced. Uh, they, they went out of production. So um, they're kind of getting a lot more expensive. A little bit harder to find um, and when you can find them you know you kind of got to pay pay um, pay a lot of money for them not like an old RCA black plate or anything um, but they definitely sound really nice they have a nice compression to them that I like and um, they sound really good with this amp so you know these tweed amps are really known for compressing early on um, and they have a really awesome uh, overdrive to them you know when they break up they break up really nice and um, the cleans on them are really warm really mid-range heavy and uh, they kind of have a nice punch to them and um, they're not gonna sound clean like a black face they're not gonna sound clean like a silver face but they're gonna sound clean like a tweed you know so um, if you can get your hands on a nice tweed amp I would definitely recommend it um, if that's the kind of sound you're looking for, you know, you could get really awesome breakup at without using any pedals, and um, they're, they're just overall some of my favorite Fender amps. So uh, <clears throat> sprayed that one out, and we're gonna put this next one in. So that being said, about all the breakup and uh, clean and all that whatnot. Um, I keep this thing biased a little hotter so that it breaks up a little earlier. Um, it saturates a little more, it compresses a little more. Um, so we're going to check the bias on it and make sure that it's running uh, where, I, where I prefer it. 
and um, we'll, we'll check that out after we um, after we finish cleaning it up a little bit. We're almost done. Don't got too much more left to do. So this rectifier here is a 5U 4GB. Um, it's a Sylvania and um, it was made in the United States. So that's a really cool um, rectifier tube there. So we're gonna go ahead and spray this one out again. And uh, I wasn't, before today, um, I wasn't necessarily having any problems with this amp that I um, started doing this to remedy, but uh, I just like to do, you know, general maintenance on it, make sure everything's running healthy and the way it's supposed to before I start having problems with it. So uh, we'll wiggle this tube in and out a couple times. You know these uh, these bear these uh, bear trap style um, tube retainers aren't my favorite. Um, I'll probably end up getting some of the kind that go down and clamp onto the bottom. Uh, they're just a they're a bit more reliable, especially if you're moving the amp around a lot. As you can see, this one's kind of starting to flatten out a little bit. Um, these two are both gripping on. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this tube out. And I'm going to bend these rings up a little bit. So maybe we could get a stronger, stronger grip. <laughs> okay. There you go. Now it's clamping onto the base of this tube. Um, so you know that's not going to affect how the amp plays um, that much. Uh, if you have the amp turned up really high... Uh, really loud since since this is a combo amp, you know the chassis the tubes everything inside of it are going to be taking all the vibration from the cabinet um, Whereas if it was a head and cab then um, you could have the head off of the cabinet But um, that's why in here you see that some of these capacitors and this resistor are actually held down with some uh, I believe that's like some silicone um, like uh, spray and it just kind of keeps them from moving around um, whenever the amp is operating really loud or if you're moving or whatever's going on, you know. So um, that's nice to see in there. So I would definitely recommend getting some of the tube retainers that kind of go down. They, you'll see they have like a, a spring on the side and then a metal base that will hold the tube up in. Um, I prefer those. I'll probably grab a set for this. Um, but anyways, for now... It's doing fine. So now that we have those all cleaned up, we got the pots cleaned up, we got the tube socket sprayed out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and inspect for any um, solder connections that are looking kind of wonky. Um, they all look kind of fairly decent. Um, not some of the best work I've ever seen, but you know, it's still, it's doing the job. All the connections still look kind of solid on there. Um, and uh, if you have any loose connections, you'll be able to hear it when the amp is on. Um, a lot of the times, uh, you'll hear like squeezing or popping noises, and uh, that's usually due to a broken connection or a connection that went cold or something, but I wasn't having any problems with that, so um, we're going to go ahead and say that all the connections are good on this one for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw the amp back in the chassis, or throw the amp back we're gonna throw the chassis back in the amp and um we'll fire it up and we'll check the bias on it um i'll show you guys how to use ohm's law and all that to calculate the bias just with your multimeter um and uh like i said before this is a cathode biased amp so we're gonna only have to measure the plate voltages and then the current um through the plates and um measure the resistance drop across this cathode uh, bias resistor and whatnot so uh, let me put the amp back in the cabinet and um, we'll do that next okay so we've got the uh, the chassis back in the cabinet and uh, the first thing that we're going to do is um, 
I'm going to talk about how you can tell if your amp is cathode biased or if it's grid biased. Um, so on these Fender amps here, if we look at the schematic, <clears throat> which I have pulled up, if you look at the schematic here and we look at um, each of these power tubes right here, we could see that the cathodes, which uh, which are the, they look like these little angle brackets right here, and there's one right here. And uh, if we look coming off of that, they connect at this node right here, and then there is our 25 microfarad at 25 volt bias capacitor, and our 250 at 10 watt resistor going to ground right there. So if your if your cathodes are connected, tied together with a resistor and a capacitor to ground, you know that it's cathode biased. If they are tied together straight to ground, so no resistor, no capacitor here, then they're going to be grid biased, which um, a lot of the black face amps are, a lot of the silver face amps are grid biased. Um, but this one here is cathode bias, which is going to allow for some more compression, a little bit nicer breakup on it. And it kind of makes it a little easier to bias because you just have to deal with this resistor and this capacitor here. So if we look inside the amp, <clears throat> we're going to have our, resi our uh, resistor here and our capacitor here. It's grounded up here. And from each, this lead goes from pin 8 and then it's jumped to pin 8 of this other um, 6, 6L6 power tubes. So they're measured directly off of pin 8 there. Um, and then on pin 3 of each of these is going to be our plate. And uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check out which of these is pin 3. And we're going to measure from pin 8 of the rectifier to pin three of the um, the trend, the uh, the power tubes here, and what that's going to tell us is if we look at our schematic here again, we could see that the plates on each of these power tubes, which are the big rectangles inside, they're going to each half of the output transformer right here. So you can see that this one right here, this lower one, comes up and is tied to this side. And this one comes down and is tied to this side. And the center tap comes out and it connects right here by this 10K resistor and the filter capacitors. Which if we look inside the amp, they connect right here. So if we trace that back, that comes from um, pin pin eight of the rectifier tube. So I got this drawing from uh, Uncle Doug's YouTube channel, and um, you can see that the rectifier fits a five Y three five U four GZ thirty four. It comes off of pin eight. It goes into the center tap of the output transformer, and those come out into the pin three of each of the six L sixes, which are the the uh, the plates. Um, so what we're gonna do is first, before we turn the amp on, um, what we're gonna want to do, since this is a cathode biased amp, just give me one second. <clears throat> We're going to measure the resistance of the bias resistor with the amp turned off first. So, like I said before, our bias resistor is this big white one. So we're going to, uh, we're in ohms right now, we're measuring resistance. And we're just going to measure right across that. And it is 323.5 ohms. So <clears throat> we're at 323. 
and then next what we're going to do is we're going to turn the amp on and we're going to measure the voltage drop across the same bias resistor okay so we're going to do that set uh set your multimeter to read voltage plug your amp in we're going to power that up and uh our light turned on so next what we're going to do is we're going to let this amp warm up a little bit We're going to see if we can't plug into a outlet that is not a power strip. That will probably help us out a little bit. Okay, so make sure you want to plug into a reliable power source when you're doing this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure the voltage drop across the same points there. We're measuring 29.03. So next, using Ohm's law, we're going to calculate the plate current of each of these tubes. So Ohm's law states that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our voltage, which was 29.03, and we're going to divide that by our resistance. 29.03 was our voltage drop divided by 323.3 was our resistance and since both of these power tubes are sharing the same cathode bypass capacitor and resistor this is the current for both of the tubes so if we divide it by two that's going to give us the current through one of the tube so right now we're running 44.8 milliamps through each tube. So I'm going to write that down. 0.04489 milliamps per tube. Okay. So next what we're going to do is we're going to measure the plate voltages. Which are pin 3 of each of the tubes. And those are going to go right to ground. So if we get in here, let me turn my flashlight on so I could see a little bit better. Okay. So we're going to measure the current, the plate voltage on each of these tubes. So on the left, we're at 418 volts and on the right we are at 418 volts as well so next <clears throat> um, we are going to use the power rule um, which says that <clears throat> If you have your voltage and you have your current, if you multiply them together, you're going to have your power. Um, so if you multiply voltage and current, you're going to get how much watts um, each of these tubes is putting out. So we have our current, which was 44.8 milliamps or 0.0448 amps. And we're going to multiply that by 418 volts because that was our plate voltage and we are outputting 18.76 watts so each of those is putting out 
18.76 watts per tube. So if we look at our um, our maximum voltage for each of these um, 6L6, what we're going to want to see is um, these tubes are they're rated at 30 watt maximum output, but um, you're usually going to want to run them no higher than 19 watts for a nice clean sound that'll break up um, that will break up a little bit whenever you have it um, turned up a little bit but it'll still kind of stay clean once you roll down on the volume a little bit um, so if we have a 19 percent uh, or if we have a 19 watt maximum and we're running at 18.76 if we divide that by 19 and multiply that by 100 we're gonna see that we're at 98.7 percent of the maximum uh, plate dissipation so these are both at 98.7 percent and uh, like I said before you know one of the reasons why I really like uh, the, these tweed amps is the way that they break up you know I have other amps for whenever I want to run it clean and get a really nice thick fat clean tone um, you know like the mid scoop black face sounds uh, the really ice picky trebly uh, sounds from a silver face amp you know these tweed ones are a lot warmer and they break up a lot nicer um, so I kinda like running it hot like this um, it's definitely putting out a lot of power um, you know as long as you're not really going over the maximum uh, plate dissipation for each of those uh, 6L6 tubes then you're gonna be good um, so our bias shows that we're definitely running it hot but still in a safe safe range there um, if you wanted it to stay have a little bit more headroom then like I said before you would definitely uh, wanna change this resistor <clears throat> and um, if you're in um, cathode bias if you increase the resistor if you increase the value of this resistor it's actually going to decrease your plate current because this resistor is allowing um, you know electrons to flow through it which is the current that we're measuring so this the current that's flowing through this resistor here is the same current that's flowing through your plates on your power tubes so if we de if we increase the resistance it's gonna block electrons from traveling its path through it it's kind of like opening up a gate the higher the resistance of this resistor the smaller the opening to your gate is you know it's kind of like turning on your water faucet if this is a really high resistance it's like turning your water faucet on barely so that it's just dripping a little bit if you raise it up if you decrease the resistance it's like opening up the, the faucet more allowing more water to flow through more current to flow through your plates so if I wanted to increase the headroom of my amp, if I wanted it to break up later on, if I wanted it to sound cleaner, I would have to um, increase the resistance here, which is going to lower the plate current. It's going to lower the plate current on this uh, 6L6 tube, and it's going to cause it to work a little less hard. You know, So if I wanted to decrease the resistance on here, it's actually going to run more current through each of the tubes and it's going to cause them to be working a li little bit harder and they're going to break up a little er earlier they're going to break up a little harder and um, so it's all kind of the taste as long as you're running it in um, you're not going over the maximum plate dissipation and um, where it's at right now I'm pretty happy with so uh, I think that's going to conclude this video um, and if you have any questions I'll put uh, down in the comments I'll put my email and uh, if you got any questions about Ohm's Law or want to go a little more deeper into any of this stuff you could uh, shoot me an email ask me any questions you'd like and um, thanks for watching